Al hijo del Espíritu Santo. Como era en un principio, ahora y siempre, por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. Oh Jesús mío, perdona nuestros pecados, líbranos del fuego del infierno, lleva al cielo a todas las almas, especialmente a las más necesitadas de tu misericordia. Dios te salve, Reina, Y después de este destierro, como nuestro a Jesús, fruto bendito de tu vientre, oh Clementísima, oh Piedosa, oh Dulce Virgen María, ruega por nosotros, Santa Madre de Dios, para que seamos dignos de alcanzar las promesas de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Amén. En el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Mother Angelica, an immeasurable legacy wrought on the hearts of multitudes won into God's kingdom by her obedience, by her yes to God. On the 101st anniversary of Mother's birth, EWTN pays tribute to a life totally dedicated to Christ and His Church. From Our Lady of the Angels Chapel in Irondale, Alabama, Holy Rosary in honor of Mother Angelica's birthday, Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern on EWTN. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Holy Mother of God, pray for us. Holy Virgin of Virgins, pray for us. Mother of Christ, pray for us. Mother of the Church, Pray for us, Mother of Divine Grace. Pray for us, Mother Most Pure. Pray for us, Mother Most Chaste. Pray for us, Mother Inviolate. Pray for us, Mother Undefiled. Pray for us, Mother Most Amiable. Pray for us, Mother Most Admirable. Pray for us, Mother of Good Counsel. Pray for us, Mother of our Creator. Pray for us, Mother of our Savior. Pray for us, Virgin most prudent. Pray for us, Virgin most venerable. Pray for us, Virgin most renowned. Pray for us, Virgin most powerful. Pray for us, Virgin most merciful. Pray for us, Virgin most faithful. Pray for us, mirror of justice. Pray for us, seat of wisdom. Pray for us, cause of our joy. Pray for us, spiritual vessel. Pray for us, vessel of honor. Pray for us, singular vessel of devotion. Pray for us, mystical rose. Pray for us, tower of David. Pray for us, Tower of Ivory. Pray for us, House of Gold. Pray for us, Ark of the Covenant. Pray for us, Gate of Heaven. Pray for us, Morning Star. Pray for us, Health of the Sick. Pray for us, Refuge of Sinners. 
Pray for us. Comforter of the afflicted. Pray for us. Help of Christians. Pray for us. Queen of angels. Pray for us. Queen of patriarchs. Pray for us. Queen of prophets. Pray for us. Queen of apostles. Pray for us. Queen of martyrs. Pray for us. Queen of confessors. Pray for us. Queen of virgins. Pray for us. Queen of all saints. Pray for us. Queen conceived without origin of sin. Pray for us. Queen assumed into heaven. Pray for us. Queen of the most holy rosary. Pray for us. Queen of families. Pray for us. Queen of peace. Pray for us. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. That we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Grant we beseech thee, O Lord our God, that we thy servants may enjoy perpetual health of mind and body, and by the glorious intercession of the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, be delivered from present sorrow and enjoy everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre, Hello, family. Mother Angelica, the late foundress of EWTN, had a beautiful mission in life, to love the Lord and point others to Him. And this is what she did when she launched EWTN more than 40 years ago. Even now, EWTN gives you everything that you need to deepen your faith, to be well-formed, and to live a sacramental life. And this great work of evangelization is possible because a cloistered nun said yes to Jesus. Later this month, we'll celebrate the 101st anniversary of Mother Angelica's birth. As we remember her and her legacy, we hope you'll join us for EWTN Giving Day. For this event, we're asking that 1,000 people step forward as new monthly donors. Will you become one of them? Your monthly gifts will help us broadcast daily mass, the Holy Rosary, live shows, as well as news from a Catholic perspective. And when you sign up as a monthly donor, you'll receive a special ebook, Mother Angelica's Reflections on the Most Blessed Sacrament. Today, will you help us continue Mother Angelica's mission? I hope you will. Thank you, and may God bless you. EWTN Giving Day is April 18th, but it's not too early to join us. You can become one of 1,000 new monthly donors or make a one-time gift by visiting EWTN.com slash giving day. You may also call us at 1-800-447-EWTN or send your donation to EWTN, 5817 Old Leeds Road, Irondale, Alabama, 35210. Jesus is constantly at work in our lives, whether through a subtle whisper or a dramatic event. Our Lord is encouraging you to turn away from earthly things and toward Him. In his second book, Spiritual Lightning, answering your call from Jesus to master his values, popular author Deacon Richard Eason helps you recognize these game-changing moments of grace. Inspired by sacred scripture and more, 
Deacon Eason will help you live as Jesus taught. See how powerful saints, as well as ordinary people, have been transformed by embracing our Lord's teachings and letting God's power run wild in their souls. Spiritual Lightning, answering your call from Jesus to master his values by Deacon Richard Eason. The latest release from EWTN Publishing, now available at EWTNRC.com or call 1-800-854-6316. Hi, this is Doug Keck inviting you to join me next time when our guest author is Jose Carlos Gonzalez Hurtado. His book, New Scientific Evidence for the Existence of God. What we know is that the more that we know about science, the more that we get closer to the existence of somebody that we call God. Uh, so the only way for atheism is ignorance. A thought-provoking interview next time right here on Bookmark. EWTN. Live Truth. Live Catholic. Family, a prayer that we pray together is a powerful prayer. So please pray together with me our EWTN family prayer. Today we pray for marriage. Almighty God and Father, we adore you. You are the author of marriage and have made it a covenant of faithful, exclusive, and enduring love between one man and one woman. Protect this sacred institution from those who are working to deform it. Bring to conversion those who cohabitate and restore the dignity of marriage and family life to our land. Strengthen those who are struggling in their marriages and protect our children from neglect and divorce. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, Pray for me to the Lord our May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that putting off our old self with all its ways, we may live as Christ did. For through the healing paschal remedies, you have conformed us to his nature, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, filled with grace and power, was working great wonders and signs among the people. Certain members of the so-called synagogue of freedmen, Cyrenians, and Alexandrians, and people from Cilicia and Asia came forward and debated with Stephen. But they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. Then they instigated some men to say, We have heard him speaking blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people, the elders, and the scribes, accosted him, seized him, and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They, pre they presented false witnesses who testified, this man never stops saying things against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him claim that this Jesus the Nazarene will destroy this place and change the customs that Moses handed down to us. All those who sat in the Sanhedrin looked intently at him and saw that his face was like the face of an angel. The word of the Lord. Be Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Though princes meet and talk against me, your servant meditates on your statutes. Yes, your decrees are my delight, they are my counselors. I declared my ways, and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous deeds. 
Remove from me the way of falsehood, and favor me with your law. The way of truth I have chosen. I have set your ordinances before me. Dominus Fobiscum, Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Ioannem, After Jesus had fed the 5,000 men, his disciples saw him walking on the sea. The next day, the crowd that remained across the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not gone along with his disciples in the boat, but only his disciples had left. Other boats came from Tiberias near the place where they had eaten the bread when the Lord gave thanks. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. Verbum Domini. I always like the Sisters of Life publication in print because they have real life stories of faith and how it impacts people and changes and assists them in their struggles in their life. And so in the issue they had about the Eucharistic revival, they had this story written by a friend of theirs, they call, him, call her a dear friend, Gina. And Gina was talking about how she was not able to set foot in a church because of a trauma that she had suffered. And she said she was so deeply hurt she was trying to make her way back to the sacraments, but it was a process full of anxiety. And so as she's struggling with this, she's wanting return, to return to the sacraments, to church. She said that she went to bed one night, it was a cold winter night, turned off the light, was about to doze off to sleep, when I heard a quiet, still voice in my heart say, Come to me, come to me. The pull was so strong, my heart couldn't say no. 
So I dragged myself out of bed and drove to an adoration chapel near my house. I slumped at the back pew. I didn't know why I was there. I knew Jesus wanted me there. It was very simple. I just sat there. I knew I didn't have to prove anything. I didn't have to say anything. I didn't have to do anything. I could just sit and be with Jesus and let him love me. I was there for about an hour. The next night, the same thing happened. I felt Jesus say in my heart, come to me. So I went again. The third night happened again. And I continued to go night after night. And then she concluded by saying, in Eucharistic adoration, I encountered Jesus on a very personal level. You want to grow in your intimacy with the Lord? Spend time in adoration, encountering him on a very personal level. She continued, the most honest and real I've ever been in my life has been sitting in front of Jesus in Eucharistic adoration, that we can put on mass as we relate with one another. But before the Lord, we can be who we are, honest, real, with our pains, with our struggles, with our questions. And she said that she called out to him, why did this happen? And it's, he's not afraid to, for us to ask those questions. I personally experienced, she said, a freedom the world cannot offer when I sat at his feet in adoration and shared my heart with him. Sometimes in adoration, I don't hear anything back. Sometimes he answers without words. And sometimes he answers later, but he always answers. Jesus is there. He is there. He is available. And he is ever present. And he hears each, each of us and wants to heal us with his truth and love. All we need to do is respond to that still, small voice, come to me. And in these days, we are reading through John chapter 6 the bread of life discourse where our Lord speaks about this wonderful reality that he's going to give. Hard for them to comprehend at the time that he delivered this in Capernaum. But nonetheless, true. And later they would understand more deeply this truth that he would convey there in the synagogue in Capernaum. And there's a beautiful uh, Meditation in today's Magnificat, I encourage you, if you get that publication, to read today by St. Augustine. And St. Augustine is pointing out a distinction. He's talking about, well, we can believe Christ, we can believe his words, but even bad men can believe some of the things that he says. So when he says, love your neighbors yourself, well, yeah, I could see. I don't want people to hurt me, so I'm not going to hurt them. Even bad people could come to that conclusion and believe Christ and what he says, for example, there. And even the demons believed he was a Christ. You are the Christ, they called out. But only those, and he says, those are not sufficient. But we're called to do what the Lord said in today's gospel, that he says, this is the work of God. They said, well, what are we to do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered, this is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. That's the work. Believe in the one he sent. And so here's what Augustine says about that word in. Don't imagine it's enough for you to believe Christ, that is, to believe that the things Christ says are true. Of course we do. Don't imagine it's enough for you to believe that Christ is himself the one whom God foretold through the prophets. Of course that's true. 
but believe in Christ. That is, love Christ. When you've believed in Christ like that, so that you have that kind of ardent love for Christ, see if you won't be able to make these words your own. St. Paul to the Romans, who shall separate us from the love of God? And Augustine concludes, so don't waste time wondering how to do what Christ commands. You cannot not do it if you love Christ. Love and you do it. Isn't that a beautiful, simple reflection from Augustine? To believe in Christ. What are we to do to accomplish the works of God? People asked Jesus. Jesus answered and said, this is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. And Augustine says it's, this means to love Christ, to love him ardently. And when we do so, then we can say with Paul, who can separate me from the love of Christ? And that's the great gift that he gives us in the Eucharist to enable us to do that. I saw there's going to be a, a new film coming out in June. It's going to be in the theaters, actually. June 4th, 5th, and 6th. And I saw the lineup of some of the people that are going to be part of that, some that you've seen, many of them you've seen on EWTN. It's a film called Jesus Thirsts. And so I watched a trailer for it early this morning. And this trailer has quotes from J.R.R. Tolkien. Do you know who Tolkien is? He wrote the Lord of the Rings series. Devout Catholic would go to daily mass. One of his sons became a priest, in fact. And so they have, as this trailer, the words in the background of Tolkien. Here's what he wrote to one of his sons. Out of the darkness of my life, so much frustrated, I put before you the one great thing to love on earth, the blessed sacrament. There you will find romance, glory, honor, fidelity, and the true way of all your loves on earth. In fact, later in that same letter, he said this. He said, this alone can what you seek for your earthly relationships, only by this alone, love, faithfulness, and joy, can it be maintained. So you want your earthly relationships to have love, faithfulness, and joy? The only way you can maintain that, he holds, or take on the complexion of that reality of eternal endurance is through frequent Holy Communion, which every man's heart desires. Everyone desires this. John Paul II said, this is what the heart of every man and woman even unconsciously yearns for, even if they don't know it. This is what they're yearning for, this kind of communion of love with the one who is love himself. This is something that is even worth dying for as we see the figure of St. Stephen, who in so many ways reflects and imitates the life of Jesus. And so he is accused of being against Moses, speaking against Moses. Well, do you remember in Exodus 34, when Moses came after speaking with God, he comes down the mountain his face, his skin of his face is shining. It's radiant, so much so the people are frightened. And he would cover his face with a veil. Well, think about that. And what does today's reading conclude with? All those who sat in the Sanhedrin looked at him intently and saw that his face was like the face of an angel. So there was a radiance, there was a glory about it. And then think about Jesus, too, on the Mount of the Transfiguration. That Matthew relates that his face became like, like the sun. 
His face became like the sun. And so God is testifying on behalf, silently testifying to Deacon Stephen, St. Stephen's words by manifesting heavenly glory on his face. When I read that, I couldn't help but think of one of our Franciscan saints, a patroness for the Third Order of St. Francis, St. Elizabeth of Hungary. And so on November 17th, we always have, uh, in the Office of Readings, a depiction or a uh, relating of her life by her spiritual director, Conrad of Marburg. So he knew her well. He knew her life well. And here's what he wrote about Elizabeth of Hungary. And she was one who had done all of these works. She had all of these means at her disposal, riches and so on. And she used them to serve the poor with her own hands, to feed the hungry, to build hospitals and those sorts of things. And so he wrote, he said, over and above all this, I speak before God. So in other words, he's making an oath. Over and above all of this, I speak before God. I've rarely seen a woman more absorbed in contemplation. Religious men and women frequently saw her coming from private prayer with her face glowing with a marvelous radiance and rays of light flashing from her eyes like the rays of the sun. So even in the saints, we depict them with halos often because of this radiance of glory already evident in their lives. And you see, when we go before the sun, S-O-N, in adoration, we're being affected by that. We're getting here, uh, you know, in the northern hemisphere, uh, that we're getting closer to the summertime. People go to the beach and they get a suntan. They're affected by the sun. But there's a much beautiful, much more beautiful radiance that comes from being before the S-O-N sun, the Son of God, receiving him in the Holy Eucharist, spending time in adoration, that we are changed by that. We do really actually become more radiant with the light and the love of God in our lives. And people are affected by that, even if we don't see it. Living in a state of grace, we are radiating something of God's glory because the indwelling presence of the Blessed Trinity. And the more that life grows, the more that we believe in Christ, as Augustine says, which means to love Christ ardently, the more that we will say with St. Paul, well, who can separate me? from the love of Christ. The more our life is being transformed, transfigured, as it was for St. Stephen. And so St. Stephen, we will hear tomorrow that as he's being stoned to death, behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right right hand of God. He sees the glory of the Lord Jesus now in glory. And he prays, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. So let us realize, dear people, we are never orphans. We are never alone in the troubles of this world. There's always a refuge. There's always a place where we can find a heart that waits for us. As this woman, Gina, puts it, Jesus is there. He is there. He is available. And he is ever present. And he hears each of us. And he wants to heal us with his truth and love. All we need to do is respond to that still, small voice, come to me. With confidence in God's power and love made manifest in the resurrection of Christ, let us pray.
that the Holy Father and all bishops and priests may be loving and vigilant shepherds of souls. We pray to the Lord. Lord that government leaders may, rec may recognize Christ as Lord, Master, and Redeemer, and lead their people to the peace that Jesus promised to those who put their trust in him. We pray to the Lord. Lord for EWTN and for all missionary efforts that help spread the truth of our faith, that many souls may be saved through these apostolates, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the blessed repose of all who have died, that they may be ushered into the light of God's presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the people of Israel recently attacked, for peace in that region, and that all people may recognize human dignity, the dignity of every human life, that this may grow during the season of the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Loving Father, the resurrection of your Son gives us a new birth to a living hope. Help us to live in that hope always, through Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up. Let us give thanks to
to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as a acclaim. <laughs> To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith, Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise or the offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service out of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you've chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, unto their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Precepti salutaribus moniti et divina institutione formati audemus dicere. Pater Quasimus Domine of Omnibus Malis, da propitius pacem in dihebus nostris, 
Europe misericordiae tu iariuti, et a peccato simus semper liberi, et a omni perturbatione securi, expectantes beatum spem, et adventum salvatoris nostri, Jesu Christi. Christe quid existi apostolis tuis, pacem relinquo vobis, pacem meum do vobis. Nere spicias pegata nostra, sed fidem ecclesiae tue, eam quae seconum voluntatem tuam pacificare a coarunare dignaris, qui vivis ad reignas in secula seculorum. sit semper vobiscum. Et cum spiritu tuo. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you, says the Lord. Alleluia. For those who cannot now receive Jesus in the blessed sacrament, we offer the following prayer. O oh Jesus, I turn toward the holy tabernacle where you live hidden for love of me. I love you, O oh my God. I cannot now receive you in holy communion. Come, nevertheless, and visit me with your grace. Come spiritually into my heart. Purify it, sanctify it, render it like unto your own. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dominus vobiscum. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Ite Prayer for vocations. God our Father, who wills that all men be saved, 
and come to the knowledge of your truth. We beg you to send laborers into your harvest and grant them grace to speak your word with all boldness so that your word may spread and be glorified and all nations may know you, the only God, and him whom you have sent, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of the Americas, Mary, Mother of the Franciscan Missionaries of the Eternal Word, pray for us. Live Truth, Live Catholic. I'm Father Chris Alar of the Marian Fathers here at the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy, and it's always an honor to have you with us here on EWTN for Living Divine Mercy. Now, we Marian Fathers were founded over 350 years ago in Poland as the first men's community ever founded in that country and the first ever to bear the title of the Immaculate Conception. No wonder why God used us for divine mercy, because God's greatest gift of mercy ever bestowed on a creature was the Immaculate Conception. So who is this saint, Saint Stanislaus Papczynski, that was our founder? Well, for that, let us turn to Father Thaddeus Langton, one of our scholars who will tell you a little bit more about this important saint. We are Thank you, Father Chris. This is Father Thaddeus. Today I want to talk about a topic that's dear to my heart, and that is our founder, St. Stanislaus Papczynski. I have to admit, when I first entered in 2007, that was the year of his beatification, and there weren't a lot of things translated into English from his original works. He's from a different era. The way he speaks is different, and we may have a difficult time forming a relationship with him compared to a saint like St. Padre Pio. Now, I know that some of you might have heard about Father Gabriel Silo. He was one of my fellow Marians. He's now working in the Philippines, and he's full-blooded Italian. So, of course, he's a guy who will talk to me about Padre Pio and the stories that he has. And I have to admit, I'm not an expert on Padre Pio. When I was in Italy this past year, I had wanted to see if there was a way to visit San Giovanni Rotondo, but it was too far in terms of trains and fitting it into my schedule. So 